Uh, greetings from Seattle, everyone. I'm Jerry Radich at the Fred Hutch Cancer Center. And I'm gonna give you a little introduction to this International CML Foundation Knowledge Center series of talks uh, from the laboratory on the clinical stream. So these will be uh, talks to talk about uh, diagnosing and managing as patients with CML uh, and with a little bit more of a clinical bend in the lab section. So, so what we're gonna talk about, we've got a series of 20 minute talks. Uh, we're gonna talk about the main laboratory studies of diagnosis, optimal test frequencies, clinical data supporting the treatment from milestones, essential molecular monitoring in low and middle income countries, um, be cerebral mutation testing and further genomic mutation testing. And I'll tell you a little thumbnail overview of each of these talks. So the first one is gonna be the, the main laboratory studies of diagnosis. That's gonna be by Dr. Carolina Obolsky from Antia. Um, and what she's gonna talk about really is sort of both the minimum amount of details you need at diagnosis to diagnose patient with CML and then some of the other add-ons if you have the luxury of some more elaborate sensitive techniques. Um, so this, this will be basically talking about when someone comes in the door with a high Y count and you suspect CML, what do you have to do to really pin down the diagnosis so that they'll be able to get uh, basically life-saving tyrosine kinase therapy. So that'll get you started on the, on the journey of this patient and your involvement with them. She's next gonna talk about the optimal test frequency for minimal residual disease analysis. That is, once you start a patient on the tyrosine kinase, how do you follow this patient over time to know how their response is and whether they're hitting the critical milestones that are associated with uh, overall survival, progression-free survival, or whether they aren't reaching those milestones, which then trigger a response and mutation testing, changing to tyrosine kinases, et cetera. So she'll go get over both kind of what the bare minimum is, what the options for testing are, and so you have a pretty good idea about how you're gonna follow these patients uh, during therapy after this talk. Kendra Smith then uh, will talk about the clinical data that have really helped us establish these milestones. You know, we, we have a whole list now of three months, six months, 12 months milestones based on BCRA levels or in some cases on cytogenetics. And she's gonna talk about why those milestones are what they are and what they mean and how they should really drive uh, your therapeutic interaction with the patient. I will then go on to talk about uh, central monitoring in low and middle income countries. Um, that is, in a lot of the places uh, around the world, these are able to cytogenetics are difficult to get. And what are some of the solutions we can do to provide testing for both diagnosis and monitoring in these places that are, that are scarce for resources? And so we'll talk about some innovations that we've made along that line and some ways to basically try to get a test that uh, in eventually will not demand electricity and might be able to done uh, at the patient's point of contact. Feeding in on the studies by Kendra about uh, the clinical milestones um, is the issue of when someone doesn't hit a milestone uh, or when they hit one and then relapse out of this. And Simona Silverini from Italy will be talking to us all about uh, mutation testing, both different types of mutation testing, uh, what it means um, and when, what you should do about it clinically when you have certain sets of mutations. So this should give you a pretty good idea of when you're following the patients, as, as we've talked about early in this, this session, what you do when you suspect resistance, how you get mutations and how you interpret them. And then lastly, we found now that uh, in many cases of CML, mutations other than b able can arise in a lot of those typical myeloid mutation panels. Uh, and Mike Dinesha will talk to you about how often this occurs, uh, what it means, and how you go about getting this uh, testing uh, performed. So this is, um, these are great talks. Uh, they'll be very informative and they're pretty succinct. And I think they will really increase uh, your understanding of this field and really uh, have a positive impact on your patients. So we hope that this is gonna be both educational uh, and entertaining. So thanks for your good work and I'll see you somewhere.